I've heard it said before that if you believe in angels, you must believe in demons as well. I'm not surely I believe that either actually really exist, and my learnings change from mood to mood. But there are times when I wonder if there's something out there watching us, cloaked in the dark, hating us. When I felt the presence of something I couldn't see, the instinct of... Instincts override logic, and I couldn't choose my eyes or turn back to it. Because... Honestly, I just don't know. I'm not certain. However, I can say with a certain amount of confidence that everyone has felt this way in one point in their life or another, varying in degrees of intensity and frequency. But that's not what this is actually entirely about. Not entirely, anyway. When I let myself believe in such things, I realized that it started around 10 years ago when I spent about a week at my aunt's and uncle's house. They lived several hours away from my home, and this was something I've always hated. Seeing their children were the only ones in the family anywhere close to my age, there were plenty of movies and games and other activities to keep me occupied during the day, book ending my experiences in a way that never really eased it from my thoughts either. Afterwards, it seemed that such a small thing to me that I had mentioned it to no one. It was late, one night, at the, well, late at night, at one point in the middle of my stay. I'd awoken suddenly in my bed, seemingly for no reason at all, and I couldn't get back to sleep, even after what seemed to be like hours of laying in the dark. Maybe it was my ADD, maybe it was other unknown reasons. Defeated, I decided to get up and move around, maybe get a glass of water before trying again, try some melatonin. I looked at the clock and noticed that it was very late. In fact, early morning. Three something, I believe it said. But what could I do? As I walked out in the hallway, I noticed that I didn't quite feel right. A bit sick in my stomach and slightly anxious, unsettled. I turned on every light that I came across, looked behind me, and looked down to dark halls and shadows with something that could only be described as a childish fear of the dark getting the best of me. I was only 11 after all. Despite my attempts to even reason my dread away, to banish it as I had once done in the dark, the feeling uh, persisted all the way to the kitchen. I needed to calm down if I was going to take another further step in that night. I got myself a glass and filled it from the tap, and then sat down at the kitchen table. I felt a bit lonely knowing that I was the only person awake in the house, and I disliked looking at these odd empty chairs. I half expected something like from the exorcist to happen. So I turned my gaze to the large glass doors instead. A impenetrable pitch of the black night was blocking my view of the backyard. I couldn't really see anything out there, but I froze instinctively. I, I felt like I was being watched. Something was approaching the door of the windows. I, I couldn't see it, but I knew it could see me clearly. But with the lights flooding in the kitchen, I was bathed in it, completely exposed. However... I couldn't see out. Everything was just awful. I wanted to run, but I couldn't make myself move an inch, not even look away. And these flimsy, hateful walls, a thin plate of glass, what good would that do to anything that actually honestly had any intentions of hurting me? None. Nowhere was safe. And whatever it was, it was coming. Soon enough, I, I, I could make out a shape. It was at about eye level with me on all fours. I, I couldn't see it with my eyes, not physically, but something made me inflexibly knew where it was. It was there. I knew what it looked like and how it moved. Closer, it still, I could distinguish its features. Thick, matted black fur against the matted black night. A chain around its throat, yellow eyes stared at me through the glass, its teeth maul dripping with saliva. It was a large dog, and it wasn't at the same time. I stopped outside the door, it and it glared at me. Snarls ripped into through its throat, and I, I couldn't hear any of it. 
Not really. Perhaps it was in my mind. I was too terrified to move and paralyzed by its malevolent gaze. It's not real. It is not fucking real, I thought to myself. Just, just get up, walk away, and go to bed. And after s several minutes, what felt like hours, I eventually did. I left the water on my table, fully tepid, and crept creepily and quietly up the stairs. <sighs> I felt that any sudden movements might set it off, and I felt that even though there was a good wall between us, it was still watching me. So I did everything slowly and carefully until I was lying in my bed, and despite my expectations, I was fairly able to fall back asleep due to my tiredness. However, I don't think I even dreamed. Dreaming is not something I really do often anyway, so not really much to mention there. In the morning, with the light, day, and the presence of other people around me, the whole thing could be written off as a fragment of my imagination. I was obviously spooked by something from the moment I got up, so it, honestly, it wasn't really far-fetched that my mind wouldn't play some tricks on me, as I've often read that sensory deprivation do cause hallucinations in both eyes and the ears. I didn't say anything to anyone, simply because I don't think it was really anything significant. It was just uh, a boogeyman outside the door or like a, you know, someone hiding in your closet. There's no one really there, but you felt like it was and it honestly scared you. And once you realize that there is nothing there, talking about it beyond that point is not really valid, I guess, in my opinion. However, I did not exactly forget about it. but. I didn't let it worry me either. It wasn't something to move on from. It was just something that was kind of strange that happened. And so life went on. The next few years were difficult and rather hard on my family, financially, emotionally, and health-wise as well. We got along well enough even in our house when even when our house was foreclosed, we switched towns, switched schools and moved across to a smaller house. As we waited for things to get better, I was 14 starting high school, and that's when things started to settle down again. I didn't exactly approve of our new home. My brother and I lived downstairs in a basement, and our room shared a wall. We both enjoyed each other's company, so it wasn't really that, much, that bad spending so much time together, but there were times where he could just flat out get on my nerves, and I would just have nowhere to fucking go. <sighs> I would often stay up rather late, reading in my room, and eventually I'd come to a nice... I would come to notice a weird and strange clicking noise coming from the bedroom every couple of nights around midnight. It sounded as if the lights were flickering on and off, but why would he do that? No, he was, a, he was an older, bigger boy, and I don't think he would honestly do anything like that. Especially something with no point, and I don't understand why I would do that on such a routine anyway. I, I couldn't really physically explain it. It was odd. It was as if I was losing my mental sanity. But again, things happen. I decided to leave him be for a while, but the whole thing is, is that the more I noticed it, the more it started to bother me. I came to expect it to happen almost every night on a routine schedule, as I stated before. A couple weeks later, it was keeping me up in the night, and I was wondering what my brother thought he was fucking doing. I wanted to slap the little bitch like no one else, waiting for it to eventually stop. After a bit of internal debate, I decided to go ask him to please stop. Perhaps not so nicely, though. However, when I knocked, he opened his door. I found the dark room and my brother himself in bed, apparently fast asleep. How strange. I closed the door and returned to my room. The odd noises persisted, and then the next day, I decided I was going to do a little experiment, something that must be making the noise after all. I told my brother what I noticed and asked him to go around to the basement and click various things, lights, doors, anything, while I waited and listened in my room for the sound that might match the one I was hearing. Turns out, that light in the little closet with the boiler was that was attached to the room, that bare light bulb inside, pulling that chain, made the noise I've been hearing at night. There's no further explanation to be found, but that there was 
possibly someone pulling on a chain. Or perhaps maybe the heater kicked on and started making noises. All I know is that I was plainly disturbed at the idea that there might be an actual physical boogeyman clicking on the lights in the fucking closet. Soon after, my brother stated reporting strange dreams and eerie feelings that it was being watched, even during the day, and I would assume that that was a response to our discovery, and it mentally, well, dismissed it, while outward, however, I mentally dismissed it while I was showing my support and sympathy. Until I started experiencing the same sort of damn thing. I would wake up at night, paralyzed of fear, sometimes coming out with disturbing nightmares, and other times out of a perfectly normal sleep. I could no longer fall asleep with my back exposed. I found myself unable to bear living with the door open at night. During the day, I felt paranoid, and I was always looking over my shoulder, waiting for something to hurt me. Weeks later, uh, something finally happened to me. I was lifting my foot to climb the stairs and join my family for a normal meal. Not a single thought in my head. And then suddenly, I was awash with terror. I just ran to the door at the top of the stairs, frightened out of my mind at no apparent goddamn reason. When I stepped into the daylight, I turned around and looked behind me and... And... It was there bottom of the stairs it was watching me it was that same damn dog and I knew where it came from and I knew it was there but I just I just couldn't see it just like before I closed the door and walked into the kitchen no one saw me or heard anything of my momentary panic and I, I didn't feel like enlightening them not even my brother strange noises are fine the creepily unexplainable things are fine but when you're seeing phantom dogs People are going to call you a liar. People are going to think you're fucking insane. Stupid overactive imagination. Calm the hell down. I, I didn't go back down there. Ever. But eventually, I just got into the habit of it. Feeling a consistent dread. That... That's just normal. Cringing away in the empty air. Normal nightmare again. Totally normal. My parents started arguing a lot at that point. My dad would leave going out to clear his head on a simple long walk gone for so long we'd start to wonder if he was ever coming back moved again switched town switched goals my grade went down to damn toilet my real life problems started chasing the unnatural fear away everything sort of peaked and then slowly started getting better over the course of the next year my aunt and uncle came to town and we sat out to eat lunch that day the conversation we had was nice and lighthearted, even between my siblings and cousins <laughs> until my brother brought up the weird happenings in our house my cousin latched onto this and told us a few paranormal stories of her own so creepy and precious little fake stories one day she said she was playing with her friends in the backyard when she heard a noise then she said that she didn't really hear it but she knew the sound when she had looked up, she saw a great big dog with a jingling chain around his neck. She had screamed and run inside of her, inside her mom, crying uncontrollably and completely incomprehensibly. She said that she really didn't understand what happened. Feeling distinctly unsettled that she was possibly seeing the same damn thing that I was, I asked her what the dog looked at. She said, big black, she said, with shaggy fur, yellow eyes. I asked... Yeah, she, yellow eyes. It was bigger and taller than a normal dog, she responded. I saw that dog too when I was <sighs> staying at your house one time. I told him the short story I just explained to you and how I woke up seeing the big scary dog through the kitchen windows and we thought it was fun, this strange coincidence. Apparently, it was all around the same time as well. What was really going on? I wondered aloud. Well, that's right. It's around time to close a relative. Well, that was around the time a close relative started getting so dangerously sick. That's right. Before my mom's and dad's business started going down the toilet, my uncle lost his job, and various other family couples started fighting. And then we lost the house. But then things started getting better until it showed up again. What if? No. 
No, there's no way. This is just a fragment of my imagination and hers. A coincidence at best. There was no demon dog following us, bringing misfortune to our family. No way. Demons are not real. Angels aren't real either. There's nothing watching us from the shadows, waiting for people to sleep. There can't be, because there is. Because if there is... Because if there is, I, I don't think I could ever be safe again. I... <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> what the fuck? So there you go. That is my reading of what's known as um, a story about a dog. And to be honest, as a story, I think it's pretty good. They had really great build-up. The story about the character was actually believable and... Honestly, I think that the story could be a fairly nice story. However, I did change the ending a little bit because I felt that the other ending was kind of generic where the character sits there and says, Shh, it's not real, bro. But I decided to make it a little more creepy, a little bit more Laughing Jack-like. However, there are, I guess, one major gripe I have with the story. One big one that kind of physically bothers me. And I would have to say that is the main villain or creep factor himself. The monster simply isn't scary. We've all seen dogs and we all understand that chains around the neck and yellow eyes is kind of like one of those instances where it's like three spooky five me. It's creepy. It's like spiders and ghouly ghosts. But... Honestly, it's not that scary. Now, if they had a description for some type of different being in there, I would say yes, that would be fucking creepy as hell. I mean, like, I honestly have my own personal experiences of seeing a creepy-ass lady with elongated arms running down the street. And I'm not even shitting you. Uh, there was a time in my life where I was walking up to the uh, corner store with my cousin very late at night, and we saw a creepy-ass old lady walking a chihuahua, with at a unnatural unhuman pace and that is honestly a true story but if it was something like that you know like like you know like think slender man watching you then yeah that this would be a lot more scary but like honestly a dog isn't that scary even if it does have yellow eyes to be honest a dog with yellow eyes reminds me of like the dog from up with the like squeaky voice you know I'll probably throw a picture in there somewhere and it also reminds me of um you know, Call of Duty ghosts with the hellhounds, and uh, it's just not scary. It feels more generic, and I felt the monster's creativity, just as much as the story needs build-up, I feel that the monster needs creativity and some effort put into it, into making it scary, giving it more features, like, you know, like, eh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, because it's just, huh, I can't honestly say that this story is scary per se however the build-up was very nice with just little reward and that's kind of the bad thing about the story when you kind of get finished with it it's like oh i read that entire story but nothing really happened and maybe that's the point but uh there usually you want to go with um at least in story development you always want to go for some type of resolution some type of loop that these a character coming back. I mean, like, I understand having mystery and ambiguous endings, but that's not ambiguous. That's just, yeah, something that's kind of creepy happened to me one time in a blue moon ago. And it was kind of similar because I had a coincidence with this little girl. Blech. Honestly, while the buildup was nice, the writing was excellent, the actual story is brought down by the villain, the lack of any payoff, and bleh, this is a feeling that I kind of wasted my time. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I got a Patreon. Um, this video was actually brought to you by a Patreon user who I believe goes by the name of Devin. Or something like that. I'll leave an annotation or link in, uh, you know, leave some type of annotation right there to let you guys know who did it. And that is if he wants me to. 
take note that if you donate money to me, like $5 a month, I will let you pick a story that I do just like this kid did. And no matter what the story is, I'll fucking do it as long as it's not a spinoff of Jeff the Killer. I also would like to note that my artist does commission, so you should totally, if you want art, rather it's furry channel art or anything like that, you can always get that from her for a fairly cheap price. This has been That Creepy Reading, and I'm signing off.